Hello everyone, I'm Ersan Ebrahim, a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Luxembourg. I will tell you about our research titled Relationship Between Quantum and Distinguished of CPA Emotions. This is a joint work with Karsten, uh, Tabia, and Oru. The full version of our paper is available at Ebrit. For the rest of the presentation, I will turn off my video since it may cover some of the text in the slides. Sorry for that. Okay, so uh, I first give you a setting that we, we consider here. Often post-quantum setting refers to the setting in which a quantum adversary tries to attack a classical cryptographic constructions, but the communication bit, uh, between adversary and uh, these classical primitives is classical. Obviously, the computational problem used in this cryptographic primitive has to be quantum hard. We can consider <coughs> we can consider more adversarial setting in which quantum adversary is allowed to make superposition queries to the classical cryptographic constructions. Obviously, this setting has some consequences. Uh, first, that it might break the uh, security of some cryptographic schemes. And also, we need to revisit the security notions in this set and see how the notion can be defined considering this adversarial superposition curves. In this talk, we look at the quantum CPA notions in this setting. I recall the classical CPA notion for symmetric encryption schemes. So the notion consists of two phases, the learning phase and the challenge phase. In the learning phase, the adversary is querying the, the encryption oracle. And then the challenge phase adversary submits to some, some challenge messages. And uh, the challenger replies to these messages depending on the random bit. And the adversary's goal here is to guess this bit of B that is chosen by the challenge. And adversary wins if he gets it right. But depending on how the <clears throat> depending how the challenge phase can be implemented, there are uh, three possible classical and distinguished CPA notions. So the first way of implementing a challenge query is that the adversary sends two messages M0 and M1, and receives back the encryption of MB and encryption of MB4 for a random bit of B. We call these two ciphertext return. Another way of implementing this is that after receiving back, you know, after, get, after receiving M0 and M1 from the adversary, the challenger basically, the challenger, uh, sends the encryption of MB for random. Only it sends one ciphertext. We call this one ciphertext return. And the third way of implementing a challenge query is that the adversary sends a message M and it receives back in either encryption of M or encryption of a random message. We call this real or random return type. It turns out that all these notions are current in the classical setting. Now, there's the question that may arise is that uh, how quantum counterpart in the single CPA notion can be defined, and what are the relationships? How they are related together? We're trying to answer this question in this. So in order to define the CPA notion in a quantum setting, 
in a setting that we consider adversarial superposition queries, we need to fill in these question marks. I first go through the existing quantum CPA notions. First is the bone and service definition in which uh, they implement uh, encryption queries in the learning phase using the standard Oracle model. So, and the, the challenge queries of our classical with the one ciphertext return type. So the standard way of implementing a, fun, a classical function in a quantum device is that uh, in this way, that there's two register, one is for the input and the other for the output. And the evaluation of the function, here is the encryption function, on the input register it is stored on the output register. So here's the image of the more advanced definition. So in the learning phase, they have, uh, there is a, a standard Oracle access to the encryption Oracle. And in the challenge phase, there's two classical message and uh, the say gets back the encryption of MB for random B to B. And of course, adversary tries to guess this B to B. Another definition is that they use a minimal query model in both challenge phase and the learning phase. And then the challenge phase, the challenge query is implemented as a one ciphertext return type. So minimal query model is different from standard query model in which uh, there's only one register and is an input register and that the say gets back the evaluation of the encryption function and this input register as, a, as an output. Just basically, this is the way that the minimal query model is defined. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, here is the image of their definition that in the learning phase, the queries are implemented as a minimal query model. And then the challenge phase, the adversary uh, chooses two quantum messages, or zero and or one. And the uh, challenger uh, sends the encryption of row B. And of course, the, the adversary tries to get B, B. This is how the challenge queries are, are implemented. Uh, so depending on the B to B, either we swap this to register or, or we don't. If the B is zero, then we get by encryption for zero. If B is one, then we get back encryption of row one. Row zero or row one can be entangled here as well. The third definitions, uh, they use uh, standard query models with the real or random return type in the challenge phase. So both the learning phase and the challenge phase is quantum. And uh, in the, the, it's implemented in the standard Oracle model. Here is the image of their definitions in the learning phase. We have a standard Oracle access to the encryption Oracle. In the challenge phase, the adversary uh, outputs two register, one for the input and the other for the output. And uh, it gets back. Uh, basically, uh, M and Y XOR encryption of I M when B is one and encryption of M when Y is zero. So either either the challenger apply a permutation to the import register or it doesn't before before uh, encrypt. And the adversarial goal here is to guess if this random permutation has been applied to the input register or it hasn't. Now, we may ask the question, are these all possible definitions? And the answer for this question is no, if we systematically answer. So you will see that 
the possible notion, the possible definition for a quantum CPA notion are huge. So uh, let's look at uh, the different ways that we can we can define the quantum CBA notions. As you saw in the previous slides, uh, the queries to the encryption oracle can be implemented in different ways. So it can be classical query, the input of X, the classical input of X, uh, and then we get that the cell gets back the encryption of this message. Or it can be implemented as a standard query models or a minimal query model. And also it can implement an embedding query model in which the, the output register is always zero. So the difference between the embedding query model and the standard query model is that here uh, the output register in the, is zero in the embedding query model. But in the standard query model, the output register can be chosen by adversary. So this Y can be chosen by adversary. Also, you, you saw in the previous slide, there are different ways to implement the challenge queries. And there are different return types, namely one ciphertext return, two ciphertext return, and real or random return types. In addition, the number of queries matters. So the number of queries can be a zero, one, or polynomial number of queries. So now we can, we can uh, uh, theoretically calculate all possible definitions. You know, for the learning queries, we have five choices. And for the challenge queries, we have two times four times three choices. And if we do the math, we, we get 120 notions, possible notions. This is really frightening if you want to get to study these notions and also study the relations between. We excluded uh, some definitions. Also, some of the definitions are possible to achieve. So excluded notions are uh, the notions that have different quantum queries in the learning phase and the challenge phase. These notions, 36 notions of, are of this category. Of course, uh, well, we consider this notion uh, to be exotic, but of course, this is our in addition, there are some notions that correspond to the one-time CPA notion. That is, there is only one challenge query. There are 12 notions of this category. And the impossible security notions are 15 notions uh, that they cannot be achieved uh, with any encryption scheme. In other way, uh, any encryption scheme is insecure with respect to these notions. So if we do the mass, then we get 57 notions left to start. But still, this number is huge to basically figure out all the relations between them. I gave you an example of such notions. Uh, for instance, if we combine the minimal query model and the real or random return type, then we get this definition shown in the image. So the learning queries are implemented as a minimal query models and then in the challenge phase that we say, uh, basically adversary uh, chooses uh, one register, one the input register, and send it to the challenger. And the challenger either apply a random permutation to do this register or it doesn't. And then encrypt this register after, after this. 
So the adversary's goal is to, to guess if this permutation has been applied to the message or it hasn't been applied. So all the, all the, all the other combination can be defined similarly. So we study this uh, 57 possible notions and uh, we group the equivalent notions together and this resulting to 14 panels. So these 14 panels consist of notions that are equivalent. And we study the relations between these 14 panels. So the implication and the non-implication between these 14 panels. This is a table of our results. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, there are some slots that have a question mark. Also, there is some red non-implications. So this, this, these are the open questions. Uh, and the red, red non-implications are conjectures. In the paper, we gave a discussion about this, and we basically we, we discuss why we, we consider this direction as a conjecture, and we we basically think that this direction hold the non-implication basically hold, and also we show that if this non-implication hold in this conjecture hold, then all the open question can be resolved, can be solved by transitivity. So the table will be complete if this non red non-application hold. Also, we gave reason why this, this might, well, the, the non-application is more likely to hold. So we reached the last slide of my presentation. Uh, here I give you some conclusions of this table, table that we, we, we got here. And uh, I skip also many of the conclusions, also I skip the techniques that have been used in our So as a first, uh, first conclusion is that the two definitions imply all other definitions together. And these two definitions are the standard query model with the real or random return type in the challenge phase, and the minimal query model with the one ciphertext return type in the challenge phase. So here, both the challenge phase and the learning phase are implemented quantum, quantumly, and uh, uh, one is with the standard coding model and one with the minimal coding. We also present a scheme that secure respect to both definition. And this means that this scheme is secure with respect to all 57 definitions. We also show that this definition are not comparable. The, the definition one and two are not comparable. And also opposite to the classical case, different quantum in the secure CPA notion may not be equivalent. I think the presentation is finished. Thank you a lot for listening.